This episode of On the Record is brought to you by Cummins. I'm Executive Editor Kim Schmidt. Welcome to On the Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. According to industry sources, some Midwest John Deere dealers are currently testing new Deere-branded strip-till rigs. The new unit is reportedly designed by Shortline Toolbar Manufacturer Environmental Tillage Systems. One industry official told AEI he was surprised that the agreement involved ETS instead of Orthman, which has a decades-long history of production and licensing agreements with John Deere. Another industry official AEI spoke with noted that perhaps a newer machine, the 2510S is 10 years old, may signal a legitimization of the strip-till practice, but may also indicate that Deere is becoming more responsive to trends, even when machine volumes are not as high as core markets. One John Deere dealer did confirm with Ag Equipment Intelligence they would receive a John Deere strip-till rig for three weeks sometime in mid-October to test on farms. John Deere has a media event scheduled for October 28th in Davenport, Iowa, where the company says it will showcase the latest tillage tools and precision ag tillage technology with a focus on conservation tillage tools and techniques, and will reveal a new product. This new unit would replace John Deere's previous strip-till rig, the 2510S Strip-Till Residue Master Applicator, which was introduced in the late 2000s. John Deere did confirm in a statement to Ag Equipment Intelligence that the 2510S had been discontinued in 2021. Deere's growing presence in the strip-till market could serve to legitimize the practice for growers who might be skeptical of its benefits. A similar phenomenon occurred in 1985 when John Deere launched its 750 no-till drill. According to a report from No-Till Farmer, the innovation of the 750 is said to have done more for no-till than any other no-till equipment development in history and confirmed that John Deere accepted no-till is here to stay. Both John Deere and Environmental Tillage Systems declined to comment on this story. This week's dealers on the move include H&R AgriPower, Kitsap Tractor and Equipment, and Linko Precision. Case IH dealer H&R AgriPower has acquired Huffling Truck and Tractor, located in Washington, Indiana. Currently, Huffling has two locations on the same campus, including Huffling Truck and Tractor, which H&R acquired on October 3rd, and Huffling Lawn and Cycle Sales, which H&R plans to acquire later this year. Kubota dealer Kitsap Tractor and Equipment has opened its second location in Marysville, Washington. Independent dealer Linko Precision, based in El Paso, Illinois, has purchased the precision farming assets of Dairy One Cooperative, based in Ithaca, New York. Linko Precision works in 12 northeastern states and partners with growers and retailers across Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Missouri, Ohio, and now New York. Now here's Noah Newman, who has more on the Linko Precision deal in today's Technology Corner. Thanks, Kim. This is a, a big deal for Linko Precision as the Central Illinois-based company expands its footprint to the East Coast. Now, we caught up with Linko Precision owner Skip Kleinfelter for the inside scoop on how this deal came together. He tells me it started with Amvax, Simpass, and Smartbox Precision Technology, which we actually covered in the previous edition of the Technology Corner, you may remember. Now, Linko was granted one of the first licenses to handle those Simpass products and they sold three times as many as the second highest selling dealer in the kickoff year. So in recent years, Linko Precision developed a strong relationship with Dairy One Cooperative. Well, Dairy One's people became interested in Simpass products. Linko ended up getting a license from Amvax distribution partner, Trimble, to sell those Simpass products uh, on Dairy One's turf on the East Coast. So naturally, Linko and Dairy One got together and after multiple conversations, Linko ended up purchasing their precision farming assets. They are a uh, digital company where they, they handle a lot of data with milk testing and soil testing and things. And once we got through to all the discussions of what we thought the synergies were, we ended up purchasing their precision farming arm. As we sell products that develop and generate data and the plan is for Dairy One to be able to crunch that data for their customers, us to handle the hardware and support for those products. Now, we also asked Kleinfelter what kind of challenges come with managing and servicing from afar. Well, thanks to Zoom, FaceTime, and everything else we could do with our phones these days, uh, not as many challenges as you would think. 
also a lot of the screens today on the technology side, we can grab those digitally and walk people through issues, problems. And some customers really are not comfortable with pushing buttons while they're zooming you on the phone. And other customers will hope you do it that way, partially because it it gets you to them hours sooner sometimes. And if they understand their technology and what buttons to push when you ask them to, they can get back going up and going a tremendous amount quicker than somebody having to drive there and somebody having to drive back. And it's less expensive for them too. And you can learn more about Linko Precision's expansion during our full conversation with Skip Kleinfelter later this month on the Precision Farming Dealer podcast. That's it for today's Technology Corner. I'm Noah Newman. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, Noah. Amid global political and regulatory pressure to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, mainly carbon-based gases, manufacturers of heavy-duty off-road equipment used in agriculture, forestry, mining, and construction are scrambling to provide customers with the equipment capable of the tasks at hand, while addressing growing calls to totally decarbonize the industry over the next 30 years. Ag Equipment Intelligence's just released report, Alternates to Fossil Fuels and Farm Machinery, Overview and Outlook through 2027, explores the market potential for these fuel sources. When asked about the potential product mix of diesel-powered equipment and machines powered with alternatives, Ashby Graham, JCB's General Manager for Product and Marketing in North America, avoided percentage predictions. But he did say the mix will definitely have shifted significantly toward alternative energy sources within the next five years. If farmers have anything to say about it, however, renewable diesel and ethanol will both be fuels of choice if compliant equipment is available to burn them. In a joint text poll by Ag Equipment Intelligence and Farm Progress in July 2022, growers were asked about their choice for an alternative fuel as regulators seek to eliminate carbon emissions from diesel-powered equipment. An overwhelming 82% threw their support behind renewable diesel and ethanol as their immediate choice of decarbonized farm fuels. Similarly, farm equipment dealers across North America who were surveyed in AEI's primary research for this report in August 2022 indicated similar thinking. The full report is available for purchase through agequipmentintelligence.com. Now here's Ben Thorpe with a data and trends update. Thanks, Kim. According to the Ag Equipment Intelligence 2023 Dealer Business Outlook and Trends Report, a little over 96% of dealers forecast a price increase from their mainline supplier next year, down from slightly 99% last year. However, among dealers forecasting an increase, more bet on a higher increase than last year. Just over 24% of dealers expect a price increase of 10% or more from their OEM next year, well above the 13.9% who said the same last year. More dealers this year were also forecasting a smaller increase of 1-3%, to 17.6%, than did so last year at 12%. Otherwise, the 4-6% and 7-9% to increase categories saw declines in the percentage of dealers selecting them. Forecasted price increases remain well above levels seen for 2021, when no dealers forecast either 7-9% to or 10% or more increases from their OEMs. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, Ben. This week's data point is brought to you by Ag Equipment Intelligence's Executive Briefing. While X carbon contribution went down in 2020, USDA says its share of carbon emissions in the U.S. economy increased from 10.6% to 11.2%. Fertilizer application, manure management, and animal food digestion are some of the sources in America's ag carbon contribution, says USDA. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to kschmidt at lessetermedia.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us. 